Welcome back to JRG Guitars Up today. Our kit build goes from raw wood and pieces and gets put together, turning into that. Coming at you. All right, thanks for tuning back into JRG Guitars. Our kit build has really come together and it's looking quite nice. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I got to that point. Last episode, we left off where we had applied the crackle paint and the thing was really starting to look nice. So today we pick up where we left off. We start with cleaning up uh, the guitar as it would be, applying some clear coat, going through some of the other finishing details, putting on the hardware, and getting it strung up and getting it to a point where hopefully it's gonna be quite nice. So thank you very much for tuning on in to another episode here on JRG Guitars. Real quick before we get into it, I'd like to ask if you're enjoying this type of content, certainly if you're liking the series, to go ahead and hit that like button, click the subscribe button, and ring that bell for future notifications so I'll be able to let you know when next episodes and other projects are coming out for you. But let's not waste any time, let's get right into the process and I'll show you how we turned our kit into this. All right, so starting off with clear coat, deciding just to use clear out of a rattle can. This is Rust-Oleum off the shelf from Home Depot. Started off by shaking the can for two minutes, then I soaked it in that hot water there, pulled it out, shook it up again, and that really makes that stuff ready to go so I can get spraying. So starting the spraying here with an initial coat, a real dusting coat, just a tack coat. I spray it on there, getting the front, back, sides, headstock, the whole bit, and let it sort of set up for just about 10 minutes before I go back and do another coat. And then as promised, coming through my for my second and third coat, which were just a slightly heavier coat. Then we come in now with one session of those three coats on the guitar and I felt the crackle was protected enough that I could sand out where I bled through here. So I'm coming in and sanding just around this uh, neck joint area and making sure that I got all that bleed off before I can go back and do my next session of clear to then get some clear that is going to be on the neck itself. So taking care of all of this area just with the light sanding, protecting the actual guitar body with that blue painter's tape to make sure I don't mess up any of that clear in there with a little exacto knife really trying to make a clean edge. Here we are now with two coats, or two applications, I should say, of the clear coat. Uh, first application being three coats <clears throat> dried for a day. Another three coats has now dried for a couple of days. It's getting hard, uh, where I feel I can now work with the guitar without fear of ruining that under finish. Uh, so as I stripped off the tape, you can see some of the really clean lines that developed right around the cut there. I ended up putting the clear on the back of the neck as well. My plan is to continue to apply clear applications and sand that back and then we will buff the body and headstock to a high gloss shine, but I will leave the neck uh, all of the unpainted portions, so the back of the headstock and everything has more of a matte or satin finish. But you can see uh, it really looks good and we're gonna do some wet sanding now to bring down some of those high spots before uh, applying another coat of clear. All right, so this quick wet sand, not too bad. I'm just spraying down both the guitar and the sandpaper with some soapy water and getting in there with just some 320 and trying to knock down those high spots, not going very deep because I do not want to burn through the clear. So a wet sand complete on this, still some texture to be felt, but I didn't want to burn through clear coat, but uh, the sand is now ready for another clear coat application and we'll see if one more clear coat will do the job. There's the guitar back hung out in Mother Nature's spray booth for another application of clear. So here we are with what I think is a sufficient amount of clear on there. I don't feel the texture of the crackle anymore. Still some sanding down to be done here before I could buff to a mirror shine. But that leads me to now the back of the neck and how I want to treat that. I have 
gone to some great detail here in cleaning up this edge. And I have sanded back a lot of this gloss clear coat here to get this about as smooth as I can be so it can be ready for the next step, which will be to coat this with clear, but I'm gonna coat it with a satin clear because I'd really like to have that feel for the back of the neck. So the pan would be for everything that is raw wood. So the sides of the headstock and of course the back of the headstock, the entire back of the neck, all up into here is going to be coated with that clear satin. And then I will not buff it to the quite mirror shine that uh, the body will have. And that will give me a nice satin playability on the back of the neck. So that's where we are now trying to get that happening. So here I am back out in the spray booth with a little cardboard protecting the guitar body and spraying that clear matte finish on the back of the neck and the back of the headstock and looking good. One of the perils of using Mother Nature's spray booth is sometimes you get little critters in your clear coat. Here we are now with the guitar wet sanded down to a fairly fine grit. If I take a nice low angle and I can see no sheen really, couple little sheen spots that indicate some low spots there, but boy, it is in very good shape. I'm to the point now where I don't quite want to sand anymore at risk of burning through that finish. Uh, the back of the neck, of course, is been finished with that satin look and then sanded down as well. I'll be careful with buffing the back of the neck because even though it is sprayed with satin, if I buff it too much, I'll buff it right up to a shine and I, and I do not want that. So next step up is to get out the buffing product and start going. So here we are out uh, again in the spray booth uh, slash buffing chamber where I just have my buffing attachments uh, attached to drill motor and I just go at it using three components, a rubbing compound, a polishing compound, and then a scratch out uh, using those on all areas of the crackle to get a nice shine. And boy, it really turned out quite well. Here it is with the polishing complete and the mirror shine on it is just fantastic. I'm very excited with it. When I get at the low angle, I can see the reflection of the little windows. Just super, super nice. Really impressed. Really, really happy with what happened here. So next up is cleaning out the guitar from the remnants of the polishing and rubbing compounds before I can mount this hardware. So I have these uh, holes here for the bridge and the uh, tailpiece stuffed with paper. And of course, they've got coats of sanding sealer and black paint and crackle paint and then the clear coat on top of them. So they are caked in there. And if I try to pull it off, I'm afraid I might chip and crack the finish around it. So I am going to take my countersink bit that I have right here, which is tapered, has a sharp edge to it, and run it just to chip away the edge. I'm going to run it in reverse because I'm not looking to really countersink or hog away anything, but that's enough just to probably nick those edges so I know I won't chip anything out. So running in reverse. Out it comes. So just going through and taking the other three out and then filing out those edges. I wanted those holes to be nicely sized so when I jam those in there they don't uh, split the finish or anything like that. Filing out for all the tone and volume controls, just some final cleanup uh, around the neck there and then taking all of this tape off that had been protecting the fretboard, getting very close. So here I am with something I did not expect. I had to get some of that paint off. So I started with the sleeve and I got some off there and I scraped it off here so when it goes through, it will definitely connect. I then had to scrape off some of the paint where the uh, screw goes in. 
then scrape off the paint where it's gonna come in contact with the bridge, then scrape off the paint on the inside of the bridge. So now everything's connected all the way through. Then it needs to transmit that through the metal to the guitar strings, which are strung in through the back right here. I have that little bit of bare metal showing right there. So I think what I will do is I'm just going to get in here and have all six strings with that bare metal showing and that will enable me to have grounding to all the strings. My trusty wooden block. All right, so pounding in those things so we can mount our bridge and tailpiece and it really starts to come together. Switching to black hardware is absolutely the right choice. That is gonna look awesome. The black pickups located in there and the black tuning keys. I'm just getting more and more excited. So here I am shielding out the pickup cavities in the uh, control chamber. Uh, with the active pickups, shielding not really as important, ground wire not even as important, but I wanted to make sure I had it, so if I change any of the electronics in the future, all of this is already in there and ready to go. Then time to mount the tuners. Uh, as I'm putting these in, it was an easy process. I put them in and then put my straight edge on there just to make sure everything was nice and straight and lined up. Uh, so I could mark my hole and then drill for the screw. And it was a really easy process uh, to go forward. Tuning keys on. And once again, the black hardware, just the perfect choice. Really, really nice look, everything dialed in. Here we are on the back. Just super clean, looking great. So the fretboard had a lot of gunk on it from the tape that had been sitting there, some bleed through of paints and clears and what have you. So I go through here and clean it up, uh, just getting all of that gunk off of there. And then I apply some fretboard conditioner uh, all over it. And I come in with a toothbrush and just sort of scrub it in there and then let it sit for about 10, 15, 20 minutes before I come back with a clean cloth and wipe it all down. Now time to mount in the battery box compartment. So uh, just setting it in there, making sure that it fit in properly, fitted it with a nine volt battery so there could be no problems. And then mark my holes, tap them in there with a little uh, punch. And then I could drill my access holes and screw it up. And again, this thing from the very beginning looked super clean and I am still very happy with how this one turned out. Now time for the electronics, so we know we're getting interesting here. So nice thing about the guitar fetish pickups is they're really not soldering uh, needed. It is all quick connect stuff. So I just route all of these wires in here and then mount the pickups in. And of course, when I went to put the pickups in, I'm there with my measuring tools, making sure I have it centered on there, making sure they're level and even with the bridge. So it's not gonna look wonky or, cro or crooked or anything like that. And marking those holes and drilling them in and then pulling everything into the back compartment and plugging it all up, getting ready to go. All right, time to string it up. So I've got my stock nut here. This may be an upgrade we do at some point. And I uh, just sand down the back of it just to make it nice and flush. When I popped it off, there was some glue residue on there. So now it's ready to go. And we'll string up our high and low E string first that will enable us to sort of hold all the bridge in place and hold the nut in place before we can put the rest of the strings on. So here we go. Here we are zoomed in tight on the nut area and you can see that the nut is not as sitting as flat as I would like it in order to keep it so that it is straight up here in the front. So my intonation is perfect from fret to fret. Uh, it tilts forward this way a little bit, lifting the back up. So I'll have to file it down. 
Also, the nut is cut way too high and it will be sanded down. One of the easier ways to check that is you fret at the third fret. So therefore, it's bottoming out on the front of the third fret and in the back on the second fret. And then you should see, be able to see how much gap you have here. And I'll get in super close. You can see there is a lot. It should be just off the fret. Uh, this will cause the guitar to pull itself sharp as you fret the notes because the string is having to deflect and stretch, pitching it upward. So your intonation will never be right, especially on the lower fret. So if I tried to fret this first fret, not only would it be terribly difficult, but I would pull that note sharp immediately. So the way I'm going to correct this is by sanding this nut down here. I need to get this nice and square and flush and flat, so I need to sand it so the bottom of the nut is flat, but also bring the whole thing down a bit. So pulling that nut out, uh, sanding a little bit off and then fitting it in and then sanding a little more and fitting it in until it's all just right and got it to a point where it was really sitting well. And then once the action is set, just double checking my neck relief and we're there. Well, there we go, folks. Sort of leaving us with a cliffhanger here. The guitar is put together, we're strung up. Uh, but this episode got a little bit long. I didn't quite want to do tone samples and everything in this one. There'll be a next episode where we'll have all of that. So the cliffhanger is on. You have to tune in for the next one. So thank you very much for watching this episode. If you've watched the series, thank you very much. Do appreciate it. If you're enjoying the content, if you're enjoying the series, go ahead and hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and ring that bell for notifications. I'll let you know when the next episode is out and future projects as well. So thank you very much from JRG Guitars. We'll see you on the next one. JRG Guitars!